Yeah, there is something we should be watching for, but we should also be talking about it because I think it would be God honoring if we did that an important part of end time behavior. There's more, I think, that he's expecting from us than just watching passively. That's fine. But I think we can take it up a notch or two, and that's what I want to talk about here in a second. But one thing is for sure, the church is going to be of no use to us in this particular arena of prophecy. Churches are good. Churches are good for a lot of things. They are worthless when it comes to prophecy in most cases. There, there are a handful of exceptions, and you, you see them on the internet, and God bless them for being the exceptions. But the vast majority, I mean 90-some-odd percent, oh, upper 90-some-odd percent of the churches are absolutely useless when it comes to prophecy. There are prophecy conferences held throughout the year. You never see, at least I don't, you never see the big-name denominations being a part of it. Could you imagine anyone attending or even hearing about the Episcopal 43rd Annual Prophecy Conference? Oh, my aching back. How do I not buy a ticket to that one? Well, there are no tickets because they don't do it. When, when someone holds a prophecy conference, they don't bring in somebody from the Southern Baptist Church to speak. They just don't do it. Because the people who put on the conferences are usually people with small, quirky ministries who really care. And they invite other small, quirky ministries to come and speak because that's who's handling prophecy for the Lord. The church said, I pass. And so he gives it to somebody else. That's what he's been doing. And we go, thank you, Lord. It's a big responsibility. And he says, handle it carefully. The Revelation 12 sign, if you blew that off, there is not one chance in heaven that your prophecy, that your eschatology, rather, is going to be worthwhile to anybody. If you blew that off, there is no chance that anyone should spend five seconds listening to you. And then the Olivet Discourse. Oh, listen. The church is asleep, but the people inside prophecy, the circles of prophecy here on the internet and elsewhere, wherever they can find them, there's a plague there as well, and it's the people who refuse to listen to the Olivet Discourse. When I say listen, I mean apply it to themselves. They do not believe that it is anything dealing with the church or the church age. It's a plague. Those people are worthless when it comes to prophecy. You shouldn't give them five seconds of your time. They shouldn't be allowed within a thousand feet of a Bible study. They should be outcast because they're borderline heretical. They really, truly are. And I may be generous when I say borderline. Let me, let me get, bring in Dr. Simmelweis for the second week in a row. Dr. Simmelweis, it's 2023 now. Okay, 400 years since you lived. I, and I just want you to know, in 2023, I've got to practically beg Christians to listen to what the Lord said at the Olivet Discourse. Oh, look at that. You broke Dr. Semmelweis. Another mental breakdown. Get him to the asylum. Get him to the asylum. See what you did with your stupidity? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So if that's you... Go away right now. I got nothing for you. I got nothing for you, and I don't want to see you again until you come to your senses. Get out of here. For the rest of you, we're going to show you what we're supposed to be watching for. But let me handle a why question that I, I got this week from somebody I know who said, yeah, but the Revelation 12 sign, I mean, it would, would not that many people really, really saw it, did they? That makes no difference. That makes no difference because he told us there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And again, that Greek word could easily have been translated constellations, and that would have been helpful. As a matter of fact, I was looking in Thayer's uh, Greek lexicon. In the definition for that Greek word, he says it was routinely translated constellations, especially 
when the plural use of it is applied, which is the case here in the Olivet Discourse. My point is, he told us there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. That should have been an ongoing practice of every Christian in every church. Well, he said it, let's look. Let's keep looking. Let's look in the stars. Let's look at the sun and the moon, and let's look for the signs, because he said that's, that's where it will begin. And you know what? Somebody at some point would have come along and said, hey, look what I see here in chapter 12. John sees a sign in heaven that involves the sun, the moon, and the stars. Maybe this sign that he's talking about will manifest itself at some point so that the church can see that. Maybe that's one of the things we should be looking for. Could you imagine how much different September 2017 would have been if that had been the case for hundreds of years in the church? You wouldn't see such a blind eye or a deaf ear turned toward the Revelation 12 sign of September 2017 had they been looking for it. The fact that so many people missed it is not an indictment of the Revelation 12 sign. It's an indictment of the church. The church's responsibility was to point this out to us, and they passed big time. So little nobodies like me, and I don't consider him a nobody, but Brad over at the rev12daily.blogspot.com page, he didn't pass on it. The big guys and big girls passed on it, but we didn't. Well, Brad didn't. I passed on it for a while, but I'm back on it now. Now I see the importance of the Revelation 12 sign. And I'll tell you what crossed my mind this week. Remember the four consecutive blood moons a few years ago? And we all kind of like, you know, two hit on Passover and two hit on Feast of Tabernacles. And we were all kind of like, well, I wonder what that means, if it means anything, if it's a sign. Here's what I think. You know what I think part of the answer to that question is? I don't have the full answer, but I think I have part of it now. It was God saying, start looking up here. 2014, we saw two of them, Passover and Feast of Tabernacles, blood moons. Next year, 2015, the other two, Passover, Feast of Tabernacles. 2016, we saw the formation, the beginning of the formation of the Revelation 12 sign. The comet pinged the womb of Virgo, and the king planet, I refuse to say the J word, I'm not going to say it this time, last time I said I wasn't going to say it, and my sister pointed out, after you said you weren't going to say it, you said it, you said it, you said it, you said it, so I'm not going to say it this time. The king planet entered into the womb of Virgo in November of 2016, so we got 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017, the completion of the Revelation 12 sign, and there we begin to see the connection, the interlacing, the connectivity between the Olivet Discourse and the book of Revelation. He said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. We go to Revelation based on what the Lord just said, and we discover there's a sign in chapter 12 of the sun, the moon, and the stars forming in the sky so that John can see it. And then we see it, or we see a, a facsimile of it, a representation of it, in September of 2017. That was the sign to our generation. You're it. You're the ones that get the responsibility of being on the earth just before the Lord appears at the end of the church age. You're the ones that we are going to depend on. But we needed that all of it discourse to the book of Revelation connection. So our job was then, okay, we saw the Revelation 12 sign. What does it mean? What is it signifying to us that we're the generation? There's got to be more than that. Maybe there's more than that. Yes, there is more than that. Well, what does the Revelation 12 sign in the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation, what is it pointing to? Well, there's another sign that he sees in the heavens. These are not events. He's seeing signs. He sees the woman clothed with the sun, stars above her head, moon at her feet, giving birth. He also sees the red dragon sweep a third of the stars from the sky, and they get flung to the earth because of him. We were supposed to say at that point, okay, we see the backstory. So what is it leading to? The very next thing, the actual first event in chapter 12 war in heaven. This animosity could only last for so long before 
war broke out in heaven. That's what the Revelation 12 sign is pointing to, war in heaven. Now we go back to the Olivet Discourse. We go, huh, do we see war in heaven? Yes, we do. In all three versions, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, right before he appears, he tells us the powers of the heavens will be shaken. If we have been using the Olivet Discourse Revelation connection, that would have jogged our thinking. Wait a second. The Revelation 12 sign is pointing to war in heaven. That's war in heaven. For years, I would read, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. I didn't know what it meant. I, I, I did calamity, some, some sort of outer space calamity. I, I, I didn't. It wasn't until I understand, understood the Revelation 12 sign that I understood that it was pointing to war in heaven. Saw that on the timeline in November of last year, when we finally, when I finally moved the, the church line into its proper place, I saw it. Oh, the Revelation 12 sign is pointing to war in heaven, and war in heaven is lining up with the sixth seal. So when I came to the Olivet Discourse for the first time in my life, I said, oh, I know what powers of the heavens will be shaken means. It's war in heaven. Oh, that's what the stars falling from the sky mean. It's the angels being cast to earth. If you don't understand the Revelation 12 sign, there is a very good chance you would never understand what the powers of the heavens will be shaken means. You're supposed to use both the Olivet Discourse and the Book of Revelation to pull this all together. Now, I knew this past week I checked on this. I knew that John MacArthur, Dr. John MacArthur, high IQ, academic credentials a mile long, like him or not, doesn't matter. That's not what we're talking about here. I knew he did not appreciate the Revelation 12 sign. I knew that meant nothing to him. I also knew his timeline is completely worthless. So I said to myself, I said, I just bet you. John MacArthur, as smart as he is, as learned as he is, has no idea what the powers of the heavens will be shaken mean. So I went to his MacArthur study Bible to see, and I was absolutely right. Here's what John MacArthur says about the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Does he think it's war in heaven? Of course not, because he disregarded the Revelation 12 sign. Here's what he says. I'll do this off camera because I'm going to need a stinking magnifying glass to read the text print of his notes. Powers in heaven will be shaken. All the forces of energy that hold everything in space constant and which Christ controls, he will allow to become random and chaotic. He has no idea. He, he just thinks it's going to get, you know, real messy up there because he didn't appreciate, embrace, thank God for the Revelation 12 sign. If he had done that, he would have seen its link to war in heaven, which is linked in the Olivet Discourse to the coming of our Lord. Do you see the back and forth place? So we start at the Olivet Discourse. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. We go to Revelation 12, we see a sign that consists of the sun, the moon, and the stars. We see that it's pointing to war in heaven. We go back to the Olivet Discourse. The Lord says there will be war in heaven. The powers of the heavens will be shaken right before I show up. But when you see that happen, it is going to terrify the citizens of earth. But you, you stand up and you look up because your redemption is here. He is there. He is coming at that moment. We are told he links that with stars falling to earth. Already saw that in the second part of the signs, number two sign that John saw after the woman. But we also see it at the sixth seal. The sixth seal talks about stars falling to the earth because that's the result of war in heaven. The sixth seal doesn't show us war in heaven. We have to get that from chapter 12. But here we are told that the sixth seal is aligning itself with what the Lord said in the Olivet Discourse. This is his coming. It just doesn't show us the reason the stars are falling to earth. We have to get that elsewhere and pull this all together. That's how the Holy Spirit arranged this. It's brilliant. 
And then we go back to the Olivet Discourse when we see that he is sending out his angels to gather up the called out ones, the chosen. And then we go back to the seal six in the book of Revelation, and there John sees in heaven all of the nations standing there who had washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. It's a back and forth that is being completely missed by the church. And because they miss it, they have no clue of the times that they are living in. Again, we have got to include and embrace the words of the Olivet Discourse because they are being reflected in the book of Revelation. It is a roadmap to those with eyes that see and ears that hear to understand the times that we live in. So, okay, because we understand that, we can understand something else. The first sign, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars slash constellations. Check. We might get more, but we'll never get a bigger one than the Revelation 12 sign. Check. The next sign is what we should be watching for. So there will be signs of the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. That's coming. That's number two. That is right before the terror event of the powers of the heavens being shaken as war in heaven manifests itself somehow in the sky, possibly from stars appearing to fall to the earth. I don't know, but it's going to be terrifying. This second one, however, that involves the sea isn't as terrifying, but I looked at the Greek words for distress of nations. Okay, distress is tense anguish. The world is going to be aware of this, and we should get in front of it. We should be out there predicting this because our Lord said it was going to happen. This, is, this should be something the world is aware of. The Christians all believe the seas are going to start acting strange here. Can you believe it? Well, if they do start acting strange, it's going to be because of climate change, not because their Messiah is about to show up. Who cares what they say? Because this event is going to happen. Just as surely as the Revelation 12 sign happened, this sign is going to happen. We should get in front of it. Perplexity indicates they, they can't figure it out. What's going on here? Something is wrong. If we were out in front of it, a few of them would say, this is what the Christians have been saying. This is what the Christians have been saying. Maybe we should readdress that real quick. Because I don't know how much time we'll have when we see this. But we're going to see this. It's going to happen. You're going to be driving along in your car. You're going to be at home doing something, cooking, whatever, doing some chore, and you're going to hear something on TV or the radio or someone's going to say something at work about the oceans around the world are behaving strangely. Will it be storms everywhere across the planet and on the seas? There is a word for storms in the Greek, but that Greek word is not here in this text. That doesn't, you know, automatically... Uh, delete that as a possibility, but it doesn't use the term storms. What it does use is that the sea and the waves are roaring as if there were a tempest or a hurricane or something. We don't know what is the actual root cause of the sea and the waves roaring. Just that, they are. And I know we'll know when we see it. And we will honor him if we say it ahead of time. We always say, if he says it, I believe it, that settles it. Well, that's fine. He said it. Do you believe it? Oh, it's not for me. Okay. You move aside. Do you believe it? Yes. Then let's tell everyone. Then let's tell our friends and our family. You know, we're looking for a sign that the Lord predicted right before his coming. It's going to be the sea acting very strangely, and the nations of the world are going to be confused and perplexed as to why that is happening. If you're still alive when that happens, you need to fall to your knees and accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as soon as you can. Here's a better idea. Don't wait, because you don't know what's going to happen between now and then. But know this, the sea and the waves will be roaring. If you and I don't die unexpectedly in some tragedy, we will live to see that. 
That's what the Revelation 12 sign is all about. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, the Olivet Discourse tells us. Revelation 12 says this is what he's talking about. And it's pointing to war in heaven. We go back to the Olivet Discourse, and the Lord tells us, when you see war in heaven manifesting itself in the skies, in the atmosphere, know that I am just a heartbeat away from you. And the stars will fall from heaven, he says, and we see that very thing over in Revelation. And then he says he will send his angels out to gather the elect, and we see that very thing at the sixth seal. The Olivet Discourse and the book of Revelation are working as one united map for us to know the times that we live in.